how to do the calculation of capacitor bank for power factor correction here we have a total connected load of 1465.37 kilowatt in this project i have included a 20 percentage extra future load i have already included in it we consider here demand factor 0 0.8 and we got a maximum demand of 1172.3 kilowatt one important thing is we always need to calculate the capacitor bank for the maximum demand not for the total connected load and here for the capacitor bank calculation kvar equal to kw into 10 theta 1 minus 10 theta 2 this kw is this maximum demand initial power factor is 0 0.8 that is cos theta 1 and target power factor is 0 0.9 that is cos theta 2 okay so you can find this theta 1 either of this method the first one is the theta 1 is equal to cos inverse of 0 0.8 from this equation okay or you can use tan theta is equal to sin theta by cos theta we already know this cos theta 1 okay so find sin theta 1 by using this equation so i substituted everything on this equation and i got 0 0.27 so the answer is 316.5 kvar so i have chosen the next biggest value that is 320 kvar after finding the total kvar you need to divide your kvar into fixed capacitor plus variable capacitor bank in most of the construction project you can see only the variable capacitor bank it means they connect always this 320 kvar as variable capacitor bank it means all the control for the capacitor bank comes from the apfc relay it means on your system whenever there is a requirement then only that particular capacitor bank will be on only some design engineers design the system as fixed plus variable capacitor bank the control of this capacitor bank is not coming from the apfc relay it means whenever your system is on own condition and when your capacitor bank got the power at that time without the apfc relay the fixed capacitor bank will be on the own line I will tell you the importance of this fixed capacitor bank at the end of this video. I have divided this 80 kVAR into 50 plus 30. This 80 kVAR is here. This 50 kVAR I again divided into 25 plus 25. And I connect it into parallel and directly give it to a breaker. And here the 30 kVAR I divided into 25 plus 5 that is 30 kVAR. And all the remaining variable capacitor bank I have done like this that is all the power gets from the APFC relay so I divide it into 15 plus 25 into 5 plus 50 into 2 kVAR so the total will become 240 kVAR and here we have total of 8 steps so if there is a requirement for the kVAR first the step 1 will be started and after step 2 then step 3 and up to step 8 and here you might be thinking that why I have divided this 80 kVAR like this and connected it into two different breakers the reason is if during the operation if any breaker is damaged then until the replacement of this breaker our system will not get the power factor correction so if I divide it into two breaker, then even if one is damaged, the other one will be on the own line and it can handle our load requirement for a, some extent. And the next thing is, you might be thinking that why I have divided this 50 kVAR again to 225 kVAR. The reason is same as what I have said on the breaker case if i connected the 50 kvr a single capacitor then if it damaged then until we replace that our system will not get the power factor correction but if we use the two different 25 kvr even if one is damaged then the other will be on the online right 
at that time it can handle our power factor requirement and the next important thing is your first step must be smaller then greater than this and last if needed greater than all the previous the reason is if your system need small power factor correction requirement then the small capacitor bank will be on suddenly okay suppose if you cannot hear the very big capacitor bank then for to own that you need the high requirement of the kvar so the smaller loads which need the small power factor correction will not get the actual power factor correction you know in industry 50 kvar and more than 50 kvar single capacitor bank is available even though i have just given the capacitor bank like this for the better working condition of our system now i will tell you what is the importance of fixed and variable capacitor bank suppose your system only have variable capacitor bank okay so the main problem will happen at the time of the lower load condition take the case of a holiday even on holiday some persons will be on our building for example the building management team watchman that type of stuffs right on that day they would use lower loads means they would use some acs some uh, electrical appliances okay their load will be very low it will be very few kilowatts but their appliances also need power factor correction but due to their load is very low the big capacitor bank will not be on right at that time what will happen these appliances will not get enough power factor correction and we all know that what is for the power factor correction their appliances will be damaged easily and due to the lower power factor the current will be very high that means the current consumption of the loads will be very high right at this time the cable will be heated too much and there's a chance for the deterioration of cable and at this time the lower power factor will be recorded on the smart meter and we know that when we can't achieve the 0.9 power factor or what is the regulation of the government then we will likely get the penalty from the government at this stage we know that our power factor is less so we will get penalty from government definitely if you think you have got any deep information through this video please like it and if you want to get more videos with lot of information like this please consider to subscribe my youtube channel thanks for watching